All right, Facebook, I'm parked here at Starbucks. I have a meeting, but I want to make something clear before I go in here. Getting a lot of inbox, a lot of texts, a lot of calls. A lot of people are having dreams. A lot of people are having experiences, spirit realm, and a lot of questions are coming to me about the school of the supernatural. I want to make it very clear that this is not a, a, it's not a class where you come and get t a touch from God. It's not something where, you know, somebody is, you, you hope they get saved. It's not like that. It's the school of the supernatural. It's people that are there to discover. First of all, let me say this. I don't know what you've been taught. I know we all got our preferences, like we like our teams, whether they lose or not. But there is a, a very weak understanding about the supernatural through my life, 52 years of being alive and around church and 18 years of being saved in the only ministry I've been saved in. Um, the supernatural is a realm, first of all. It's a supernatural realm. I mean, it supersedes the natural. To operate in it, I think people think because if you get chosen to become a pastor or evangelist or, you know, or to teach the gospel, and then what's missing in many people's uh, arenas are apostles and prophets, it's plural. You don't have just one. Amen. God never uses one of anything. He sent them out in twos. So I think the problem is discovering something that you don't really know about. So when you find somebody who knows, we have to humble ourselves to allow them and their teaching to at least have an opportunity to be judged. The supernatural is not about gifts because people say, well, I want to discover my gifts so I can be it. The supernatural, listen, the, the giftings are to what? To operate in the supernatural. The supernatural, if you, if you and I want to understand the supernatural, and I'm talking from uh, experience. I'm not talking from encounters. I'm talking from experience. If we're going to do that, because this is a contribution, I'm only alive to contribute in this matter. There, God told me there will be leaders that will be humble enough to allow me to help. And I have to be okay that there's still leaders over me. And I'm okay with that. A man under authority is a man that can be trusted in authority. So I'm okay because I realize that the appointing or the vocation of ministry Meaning, like, I'm a pastor, I have regionals, I have uh, multi-regionals, I have elders, I have a founder. I'm okay with following them because they're men of, you know, integrity and character and all that. But I do, like many of you, bring something to the table. So the supernatural is not, it's not what people have been saying. If you're going to operate in the supernatural, it's about identity. It's about identity. See, as long as you have sons that are appointed to do things, or daughters, I'm talking non-gender, but sonship. You're going to have people, like I said at church yesterday, that you're going to have the son as a great man of God once told me, if you have to depend on faith, you know, we know to just live by faith, but that's a different type, that's a different aspect of faith. Um, if you have to live by faith first, then you haven't understood God and operating in the supernatural. Because faith is dependent on our capacity. It changes all the time. Jesus he operated not by faith, but in faith, but he operated as a son. you got to understand sonship. That's why he said, when you see me, you've seen the Father. I can only do what I see my Father in heaven doing. And in Galatians 4, they talk about how an immature son has to have stewards and guardians around uh, something that belongs to him. And so the crazy thing is, and it says in the fullness of time, God sent his son. He sent his son's spirit into us. Now, here's the thing. There's an immature son that still has to get in the situation where God has to tell him what to do. And that's part of the process. Amen. And then there's the full grown son, the fully mature son that operates in his father's place. In old Jewish customs, when your son got to maturity, you would tell a person this. I'm no longer going to do business with you. Right. And then he says that now my son is going to do business with you the same way I did business with you. <clears throat> now my son is because he understands his father's business. And so you won't see me. <laughs> You'll see him. Amen. And when you see him, he'll do business with you the same way we've always done it. Amen. You'll be miss nothing missing, nothing broken. So Jesus did that for the father. 
Now Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. And now guess what? He sent his spirit to us. And now we do business for him. That's why the Bible calls Jesus an everlasting father. He's the father of the faith we now. Abraham's not the father of the faith. He was until the Lord showed up and the flesh, the word became fl uh, flesh. Now Jesus has taken that place. Just like Jesus, there was high priest. Now Jesus is the high priest. So you got to understand the supernatural is about identity, man. Too many people trying to hope for something like, oh, I'm a pastor or my church is doing good. Listen, there's cults that got more people than us. And don't ever get proud by numbers. Amen? The, well, we should always be excited because even with me, God always warns me. Yes, I'm doing something in the church. But remember, I'm building the church, Gerald, not you. So don't get excited over numbers. Because, see, when you get excited over numbers, there's always room to fail like David. Start looking at what, like you did something or I did something. We didn't do nothing, my friend. And this is not a rebuke. It's not like I'm not nobody to be able to do that. I'm warning people because we're coming to the end of age. And there's a lot of people that he said not everybody who says, Lord, Lord, will enter into heaven. So that means he's looking at the motive of heart because he said only he who does the will of the Father. What if you don't understand the will? You can't do it. So we have to humble ourselves in these last days because the, the, the enemy is crafty. He knows God better than us. Amen. Many of us. And so people that don't know their real identity, because your identity and my identity, I'm not Pastor Gerald to God. I'm a son that was sent into the earth. And in the fullness of time, he put it, he sent his spirit to fill me and to get me to a place where I'm not an immature son anymore, but I become a mature son. Now, see, there's offices, apostle, prophet, uh, pastor, evangelist, teachers. God doesn't do one of anything. That's why Paul had to go to Peter. And them and say, am I not an apostle? A super apostle is what he called it. So we know there's levels of apostles. So we got to find out where the apostles are because every, listen, ministry has limited power. I'm telling you, look, pray fast, ask God. Ministry has limited power. So apostles have a certain level of power to do the job God assigned to them. Prophets have a certain amount of power to do the ministry God sent them to do. Uh, pastors have a certain level of power that God sent them to do evangelists have a certain level of power for their job and teachers have a certain level of power for their job now in my backyard i'm going to teach what god revealed to me it's all biblical i'm going to take from pieces in different places but also how jesus did things according to jewish customs that show you the expression of this power and the only way to have unlimited power is not to be ministry based we got to do ministry because we're extensions we have to do the ministry of Jesus Christ, right? We have to do his ministry. The Holy Spirit empowers us and equips us and instructs us, you know, how to do the ministry. So he does it through leaders. Like I wouldn't be where I am if it hadn't been for the leaders I have. Been to all these regionals, Mighty Men of Valor, World Conference, specialty trainings, all these things I wouldn't understand. I wouldn't have a, 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 a I guess, a, a reference point had it not been for these leaders. So I'm not despising leaders. I needed the leaders in my life that I've had. Uh, different people, the Joe Catanolas, Pastor Joe, the, the, the Pastor Alves, my brother-in-law, Pastor Jesse, Pastor Rob Mays, uh, Pastor Ed, um, Pastor Sonny. More than ever, I, I get to hear from him now more than I ever have, really. Uh, Pastor Charlie, really investing in my, in my life currently. All these different pastors, man, that have poured in, Pastor Anthony in Fremont, um, and, and the list goes on. But the point is, if I didn't have these leaders getting me into the process and dealing with my character so that God can get something into me, I wouldn't understand or be in position to understand what I know now. Now, God's not a respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of process, promises, and principles. That's for real. And so we're in a place, man, where the church, Satan is mounting up something, man. Number one, our ministry, and I'm in this ministry. I don't really know. I can't speak for other ministries. I'm going 19 years in this one, <clears throat> and we're turning 50 years old. There's no way we could be sitting here thinking Satan's just going to allow 50 years of ministry to be something we could sit around and uh, celebrate without a battle. So what does Satan do? <clears throat> Satan's the top of his hierarchy. So there's principalities, powers, rulers, and spiritual wickedness, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So, first thing he's going to do is assign the spiritual wickedness to the lower levels of people involved in the ministry that we do for Jesus Christ. 
that means he's going to attack people like UTC. I'm talking about my ministry, UTC, pastors, kids, uh, you know, uh, new converts, life group leaders, um, people that are doing things to help our churches become a solid uh, foundation, a base. Then you got the next level, not spiritual weakness, but uh, there's principal powers, powers, rulers. Rulers are you go up a little bit now. Now you start dealing with pastors and and evangelists and and you know and, and there's different things. You you get, you attack them physically and and then you attack them spiritually. You know you you try to get a spirit of distraction first so that you could bring what discouragement, open the door for discouragement. You know not getting booked in a lot of places and you're called to be an evangelist and it seems like nobody's open doors. So guess what? You get discouraged. You don't realize that you got to bring something now that's different than ever before. You can't just bring an encounter. You have to bring an experience. That means if somebody has cancer, you got to be able to do, you got to defeat cancer. You got to build a, a a reference point where people say this person God has used in a way to do something that man can't do. Right? Then you get to the point where you got powers. You start dealing with people that have a call of a prophet or things of that nature. You're dealing with the powers and they move with upper leadership and you know. I can see powers trying to deal with our regionals and and our and our multi regionals and you know um, and, and you got to look at that man and and then our elders you know they're going to go after them man and that's why we got to pray so they will attack them uh, physically if they can and and they'll find other ways spiritually to get in there and everything and then finally you get uh, to principalities I think that's more for like our elders and stuff like that people on that level and other ministries it might be bishops or something like that but for our ministry you look at our elders why it's so important for us to constantly cover I didn't say cover when it comes to mind it has to be intentional every day each level constant coverage amen constant coverage and for every level and then finally you get to our founders who that's more like Satan himself will try to attack because you got to understand, man, if our founders are that important to God, Satan is a thief. He ain't coming for something. Let me tell you something. If you were a thief or I was a thief, if I have an opportunity to steal a jewel that's worth, that's kind of priceless, you know what I mean? Versus a jewel, like say like somebody like me who has some value, but not that great of value, but it got value. What you going to go after, man? You're going to go after the one that's priceless. If you're going to risk everything, you're going to go after something that, that, hey, listen, I'm going to pay a price to go after something that's priceless, right? That's why it's so important for us to cover them physically, spiritually, everything, man. I'm telling you, uh, some people may dismiss this. I pray you don't. I pray you don't. There's always going to be a, 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 a flare shot up, amen, to say, be watchful of the enemy. See, when the Bible says put watchmen on the walls, and then when the watchmen actually try to tell you something to see them from the wall, so many people think that if it didn't come from them, then, or if God didn't show them, then they dismiss it. And maybe God is trying to show you. Remember Elijah said, God, I'm the only one. I'm the only one experiencing this. And then God said, I got 7,000. 7,000. I wonder how Elijah felt when God said, you ain't the only one. Sometimes we try to do ministry like we're the only ones. Amen. Jesus has a lot of people that he reveals himself to. Amen. They don't have to have the appointing of man. They have the anointing of God. I'm going to listen to somebody who's accurate in their prophecy. Somebody who prays for somebody and I see God validate them. Because everybody can preach. Man, everybody. I'm telling you. Uh, Farrakhan, I mean, he ain't even of God. He was putting it down so hard that then he reminded you who he is when he started cussing. So every man has the ability because God has put something in us that was supposed to be used for him. But instead, they use it for themselves or for the wrong reasons. But it's still a gifting they have in them. People, there are people that have a gift to speak. Obama had a gift to speak. Whether you voted for him or not, you know, he had a gift to speak. Amen. There's so many world leaders, they rise to the top because they have a gift to speak. They're very convincing and influential. So don't ever think because people like my preaching that I makes me something. Amen. You wait until the rubber has to hit the road. When you're responsible for people that ain't got no food on the table, they expecting you to be able to go to God and do something miraculous. 
Why do you think Jesus was teaching us through his ministry? There's going to come a time when you're going to have to take a little of somebody that got something and you're going to have to be able to bless it, break it, and God bless it. Amen? And multiply it. That day is coming, my friend. He's going to strip people that got subtle pride and have built themselves around their name rather than their position, their identity with Christ. I promise you, I don't care who gets mad over this. I'm not trying to rebuke. I'm not trying to say anything. It just comes a point, man, where you and I, we got to man up. We got to, you know, if you don't love everybody, then you don't know how to love God or you don't know the love of God. You can't love what you're doing and call it love. Love of God means you can't save everybody, but surely you can respect and honor everybody. Amen. This day is coming, my friend. Trust me. More people going to have dreams. More people going to have visions. You going a lot of people that won't, that will look at this and try to bypass it without saying anything. You remember this. You get, God's going to trouble your flesh. I, I guarantee it. He's going to do it because it's the last days. Either God's word ain't true, then these last days, all these things he's going to do. Yes, he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. But you got to know what the pour it out spirit on flesh is. You got to be able to identify it in the Bible to make sure that I ain't just caught up in thinking that my speaking. Because you got to remember, man, look, and I'm not talking about anybody in general. But, you know, I met with somebody and uh, they happened to, they are in a different ministry, but for some reason people think they get caught up in what they see. They think, oh, I moved all these people and uh, so surely I'm anointed. Amen. No, my friend. I even understand the platform I got. We're called Victor Outreach Rancho. What's the first words? Victor Outreach. That means that the ministry gone before me. The reason I have a platform in the first place to even speak God, what God gives me is because of victory outreach. Amen. It's the reason I have a, so I didn't do anything. My wife didn't do anything. All we're trying to do is contribute to what's already been given. That's it. That's it, man. So there's a body of Christ. Yes, there are a lot of people in other ministries that say, hey, I am going to try to step out more, but I want to, I, I didn't want to do it without making sure that I know what God has done for me here. I ain't going nowhere. I know some people say, you, you, amen. Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. He's different, but the same. Amen. I may sound different, but I am Victor Outreach to the bone, my friend. Don't know nothing else. Ain't trying to be nothing else. I realize what this ministry has done. It's given me a platform for God to not just give me, identify my giftings, but also my identity in Christ. Gifting is what I'm able to do. Passion is what I love to do. Purpose is what I was called to do or intended God intended me to do amen remember that you gotta find your purpose before you can have passion when you're gifting God bless gotta go in here I think the guys are waiting on me we're at Starbucks amen